Binsort is a neat little algorithm to sort things. You'll see it's radically different from anything we've studied. It doesn't swap. All right, so the first thing you do in bin sort is you declare the bin array. So we've declared up here in the code. And the way that we figure out how to declare it is we take a look at our data set. Bin sort requires that we know what's in the array because we're going to be using characteristics about the array to help us sort faster. So this array, the smallest value we've stored in it is a 0, and the biggest value we've stored in it is a 3. So that means our bin array is going to go be declared from 0 up to 3. And so we've declared it there. Then what happens is, in this next loop, we start going through the array and we kind of tally which numbers we have. So, first of all, we have a 1. So that means we're going to go to the first element right here, number 1, and we're going to add one to it. So now we've got another one, so now we're going to add another one down here. Now we've got a 2, so we're going to go over to the second one right here and we're going to add one. Then we've got a 0, so we'll go down here and we'll add one. We've got a 2, add one. Now we've got a 3, so it'll be our first 3. Now we have another zero, so now we're up to two zeros. We've got another three, so we're up to two threes. Another zero, so we're up to three zeros. Another three, so we're up to three of those. Four threes. And then we have one, another one, so we're up to three. Now if you do a quick, the way you do it as a human is you would not loop through the array slowly adding up the numbers. You just go like one, two, three ones, and you just put in three there, right? And you just go three zeros and put in there. But the way that the program actually does it is it goes through and counts them one by one. So now what's going to happen is we are going to erase the array. So that's radically different than what we were doing before. So it is gone. And now we're going to use that bin array to help us rebuild the array from the ground up. So it says that we need three zeros. So we're going to put three zeros in the array. Then it says that we need three ones. So we're going to put three ones in the array. Then it says that we need two twos. So there we go. And then it says that we need four threes. So there we go. So this is a really different way of sorting than what we studied. Um, again, we're not swapping at all, and that's why this is really fast. I hope you can see that there's a loop here and then a loop here. This one's a bit complicated. Uh, it looks like it's an n squared, but it's actually an n and an n. So this is an order n algorithm. Okay, so the code that works like this. First of all, in spot zero, we look at the array to sort. It is labeled A, and we figure out what's inside it, and this particular one has the numbers from zero to three. Then we declare the bins for our array. That's right here. And we allocate an element for each number in that array. So because the smallest one was 0 and the biggest one was 3, that's what we picked. Then we go through the array to sort, and we're counting up how many times each number appears. And as a human, we're just going to eyeball it. We're just going to go like, oh, there's two zeros, and there is three ones, and so on. Then what happens is we use that bin array to help to remake the array that we were trying to sort. And so we had two zeros, so we plunk in two zeros. And we had three ones, so we plunk in three ones, and so on. And then in this particular code, we printed out the array. So this is the card for bin sort. I really think of bin sort as cheating. We're not really sorting. Um, we're kind of just erasing and starting over. But the other thing, the other way it cheats is that it's a very specialized sort for a very specific situation. It works really great if you have integers that fall in a small range. If you have anything else, frankly, you can't use bin sort. So the speed, you're getting the speed because it's so specific. We know so much about the array we're using, we're using that knowledge to help us go fast. Bin sort also requires a little bit of extra memory for the bins. It doesn't do any of the swapping. Um, it, it just erases it and starts over. So depending on what you're moving around, that can actually be a problem. Okay, so bin sort speed is order n, which is so much faster than all the n squared ones we know. It only works, however, for positive integer type data that falls in a small range. That's its limitation. Um, and the line has to do with the counting. Uh, it cannot run. I'll show you the line why, that really restricts us. It's this line right here the one where you have the array used in the bin line. That can only be done with integers. So that's our limitation. That means that we can't use it with doubles or chars or strings or anything else, only integers. Now, let's take a look at how you would trace that. So you'd take a look at your starting array and then you just start counting things. So first I'm, first thing I'd do is I'd figure out how big I want my thing to be. So the smallest number I can see there is a zero and the biggest number is four, so that means my bins need to go from zero to four. Then I would just count them up. So first I need zeros, so there's one, two, three, and I'd write in three zeros. And how many ones next? One, two, three, so I'd write in a one. Okay, so I'd end up with that. 
Then what I do is I use these bins, so I need three zeros, so then I'm going to go zero, 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 then I need three ones, so I'm going to go one, 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 and so on to build up my array. Students really like to sort this one. It's their favorite because it's so fast. All right. So one of the other things we need to be aware of is which sorting algorithm should we use? And you should ask yourself these two questions in this order. So if you have integer data falling in a small range, you should use bin sort because bin sort is so fast. It's order N. If you don't have integer data falling in a small range, however, but it is almost sorted, then you should use bubble sort because bubble sort is close to order N. But if you don't have either of those things, then bubble sort is slow as molasses, so you should use selection sort. So let's say we have an array of doubles that's in reverse order. Do we have integer data falling in a small range? No, they're doubles. Um, is it almost sorted? Well, no, it says it's in reverse order, so no, it's not almost sorted. So can't use bin sort, can't use bubble sort, we're going to use selection sort. Okay, good luck with your sheet.